Hey what's up YouTube, it's Story of Sam and welcome back to a brand new NBA video today here on the channel. And today I'm going to be talking about where do the LA Clippers go from here, what's next for the LA Clippers, and just all in all, what do the LA Clippers need to address this offseason? If you guys are brand new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. We are on the road to 3,000 subscribers and of course guys, make sure to drop a like on today's video, that would be great. Without further ado, Let's get straight into it. So the LA Clippers had a very successful season in my opinion. They got over the second round curse, they made it to the Western Conference Finals without Kawhi Leonard, and I really did think it was a great year for them, but hearing the news of Kawhi Leonard's injury just really ruined their chances for next season because even though we knew Kawhi Leonard was injured during this playoffs, we did not know the extent. We did not know that Kawhi Leonard had a partial tear in his ACL and could potentially miss the entire 2022 NBA season. But the thing is, we don't know how long Kawhi is going to be out for. We don't know if he's going to be out for 6 months, 9 months, or 12 months. So we we really have no idea how this Clippers season is going to end up going. In free agency this year, the most important thing for the LA Clippers is to sign Reggie Jackson and Nick Batum back. Of course, I'm assuming Kawhi Leonard is going to either accept his player option or decline and re-sign with the Clippers, but other than that, Reggie Jackson was a major part of the Clippers playoff run. He was playing absolutely incredible basketball in the playoffs, and if Reggie Jackson was not on this Clippers team, they certainly would not have made it to the Western Conference Finals. Reggie Jackson in the playoffs averaged 18 points a game on 48% from the field and 41 percent from three so definitely very efficient stats in the playoffs and he was probably the best player on the Clippers besides Paul George once Kawhi Leonard went down. Nicholas Batum was also one of the Clippers best three-point shooters shooting 40 percent from the three-point line on the Clippers during the regular season and also one of the Clippers best corner three-point shooters. So keeping both Reggie Jackson and Nick Batum along is going to be very very important and in my opinion re-signing Nick Batum is going to be easy but Reggie Jackson is going to get paid a lot of money this offseason. He showed everyone in the playoffs that he can step up in big time moments and really be a key piece to a championship winning team. And one of the most important things for the Clippers during the 2022 NBA season is going to be staying alive without Kawhi Leonard. Obviously, Kawhi is the best player on the Clippers. We have no idea when he's going to be back. He could be out the entire season. He could be out for a large portion of this season. But knowing Kawhi Leonard's injury history, I know for a fact that he is not going to rush back for any injury. So the NBA play-in tournament could really be the Clippers' friend here because if the Clippers end up falling to the play-in tournament with Kawhi Leonard out, that could potentially buy Kawhi Leonard enough time to come back and really help this Clippers team make the playoffs because if the NBA play-in tournament stays the same, the Clippers only need the 10 seed to potentially be in the playoffs. That could be enough time for Kawhi Leonard to come back. Obviously, I don't know when he's going to come back. He might miss the entire season no matter what, but just being positive, I think that Kawhi Leonard could hopefully come back maybe for like an NBA play-in tournament. So if they can make a 10 seed or higher, which I definitely think this Clippers team can do because the Clippers won two playoff games without Kawhi Leonard. This Clippers team is good. They are a good roster overall. Again, they got to bring back Reggie Jackson and Nick Batum, but if they do that, this Clippers team can definitely make the playoffs with or without Kawhi Leonard. And Kawhi Leonard being injured for the 2022 NBA season is very problematic for the Clippers because they do not have their first round pick this year. They traded it in the Paul George trade, so of course, the OKC Thunder have their first round pick, so tanking is not an option. They can't just pull a 2020 Golden State Warriors, lose games intentionally, just tank the entire year and try to get a really high draft pick. That is not going to work because again, the Oklahoma City Thunder have their draft pick. They have no choice but to compete, try to win games and hopefully make the playoffs. And knowing that Kawhi Leonard is going to miss a large, large portion of this season, Paul George has to be elite. So this is going to be another opportunity for Paul George to prove himself once again that he is still one of the best NBA players in the league. Because we all know Paul George gets a lot of flack, but he really played well in the 2021 NBA playoffs, and I think he will continue to impress next season as well. And I really do feel bad for Clippers fans just because this Kawhi Leonard injury really has ruined two of their seasons just because, of course, Kawhi Leonard getting injured in this playoffs ruined wins their chances at a championship, losing to the Phoenix Suns in six games, despite the rest of the team playing very, very well. And now the injury continues into this season where probably Kawhi Leonard will not be back, just assuming that he will not play because he doesn't want to risk it. So it's basically back-to-back -back seasons where a Kawhi Leonard injury has kind of ruined their championship odds. It's kind of the same thing as a Jamal Murray injury. Jamal Murray goes down, ruins the Denver Nuggets championship hopes this year, and now Jamal Murray is going to be out a large portion next year, also really hurting their chances to win a championship as well. Also, one of the main problems with the LA Clippers is they rely a ton on jump shooting. This team is a great team, don't get me wrong, and they are one of the best three-point shooting teams of all time. And I really do think they should shoot a lot of three-pointers. They should be a very jump shooting team, but sometimes they rely on it just a little bit too much, and that's where the problem comes in, because if you live by the three, you die by the three, and they can be very inconsistent because of that. Of course, when the three-point shot is falling, everything is going great. I look back to Game 7 versus Dallas Mavericks, where basically everyone on the Clippers had a go 
going from downtown. They were killing it from the three-point line, and overall, they won that game seven because of their three-point shooting. But there was also games where they keep on shooting three-pointers, they are not falling, they're relying on tough, difficult shots, and it just does not go their way. Because the Clippers have a lot of guys that rely on jump shooting. Kawhi Leonard, he can get to the rim, but now especially after the ACL injury is going to be even worse. Kawhi Leonard already relies a ton on skill. Post fadeaways, jumpers, just contested shots. Paul George also can get to the rim, but more of a three-point shooter, jump shooter, just overall pick and roll game, post ups. Guys like Luke Kennard, Marcus Morris, Nick Batum, all those guys rely a ton on three-point shooting. So when those shots aren't falling, it's not going to be good for the Clippers. So I think the LA Clippers should try to acquire some more players that can score efficiently at the rim. It doesn't have to be some amazing player. It can be someone on a veteran minimum contract, but just someone that can score the ball at the rim doesn't rely solely on three-point shooting to be effective because when the jump shots aren't falling, they need someone that can consistently get them buckets at the rim. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video on where the LA Clippers go from here. Again, my main points were keeping Reggie Jackson and Nick Batum and also trying to stay relevant, still being a good team despite Kawhi Leonard's injury because you never know, he could come back during the regular season. So of course, staying a good team, being in the playoff race is extremely important. And also them getting a player that can score efficiently at the rim will help them out tremendously. Serge Ibaka getting healthy and most likely accepting his player option is going to help out a ton too. And just all in all, this Clippers team could have went really far next season if Kawhi Leonard could stay healthy, but it really does suck to see an injury plaguing back-to-back -back seasons for the Clippers because I really thought this Clippers team could have won the championship this year or maybe next year, but that's not looking too great as of now. And if you did enjoy today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. We are on the road to 3,000 subscribers. And of course, guys, make sure to drop a like on today's video. That would mean a lot. And if you guys do want to watch more of my NBA videos, I'm going to leave an end screen right when this video finishes to two of my previous uploads that I think you guys would really, really enjoy. So have a great rest of your day, guys. It's been Story of Sam, and I'm out. Peace.